And we are off, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Hardly Millennial Podcast, where we are young, dumb, and full of opinions. Opinions, folks. That's right. All just opinions. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I am your sexy host, Adam Hansen, and across from me is the famous Matthew Lynn. Hello. And we are here today to offer you a very entertaining podcast. Uh, only well, the sexiest was, of the was, sexiest nature only of the sexiest well that was a fun introduction yeah. uh <laughs> before we get going i just want to remind everybody that you can find all the podcasts on soundcloud well not all of them i just found out uh yesterday they can only put up a few unless you pay for it and i'm just not willing to make that kind of commitment yet so but you will always have the most recent <laughs> nice, podcast that up was, there that was great i just i just want to make Straight sure in the beginning huh? i just want to make sure everybody knows hey get it out of the way get it out of the way all right but you can always find the most recent podcast up there so this podcast will be up there momentarily you'll also be able to find the last two podcasts before that um, also want to remind everybody we have a GoFundMe, so www.gofundme.com forward slash Hardly Millennial. Throw some money in the jar for us if you're able to and follow us on all those social media networks. What you're already doing, we know. We know. It's just, you know, it's part of the script, guys. Yeah. But anyways, <laughs> uh, welcome, guys. We're happy to be here again for another episode, and we have some interesting topics. Uh, first one is, did you see the Frozen 2 trailer? today oh that's what you and justin were watching that this morning weren't you yeah they just released this so it's funny trailers are starting to do this thing now where i actually on facebook there was a quote like i don't want to call it a trailer but i guess that's what it was a but sneak it, peek it, well it was a trailer for the trailer oh it was like this small what? little 10 12 second teaser that showed clips from the actual trailer and then at the end of this teaser, they're like, go check out the trailer. It's like marketing inception. Yeah. It was, it's marketing within marketing. It was just weird. I was like, <laughs> okay. So was it intriguing? Did it get you to watch it? Well, I mean, I wouldn't say that the the teaser for the, tr like, the teaser trailer for the trailer got me to watch it. <laughs> I just happened to like the first Frozen movie, so I would have watched the trailer either way. So I was I, just shocked to know that, oh, we do trailers for trailers now. You cool. might as well get another round out of it, I, right? I guess, yeah. <laughs> I have a small confession to make. What? Um, people aren't going to like this one. <gasps> I am very late to the Frozen train. Oh, I have no. not seen it. You haven't seen Frozen? I have not seen it. The most I've seen of it is actually um, Adam has been stuck in the world of Kingdom Hearts. It's true. Uh, the third rendition of that world, apparently. Mm -hmm. And he plays it literally all night long, from probably about 11 p.m. till about 4 a.m. Yeah, I play it quite a lot. <laughs> uh, and the most Frozen I've ever seen is actually from, like, one of the cutscenes in that. There's a Frozen oh, yeah. world, and it's the actual movie, but they put, like, the Kingdom Hearts yeah, characters they, in it. Yeah, they had, so there's this famous, uh, you guys probably all know this. I know Matt even knows this who hasn't seen it, but there's a famous <laughs> song from Frozen, which is Let It Go. Let It Go. Yeah. Let and It Go. It was so funny because usually in these Kingdom Heart games, when they go and visit these worlds, they're visiting the worlds. They're they're doing the stories from the old Disney movies or whatever original Disney movie it's from, but they never put like the songs in there. And when they started to do the beginning to the Let It Go song, because it starts with this like piano opening, right? You were like, is it going to happen? Well, Are we going to get the real song? What I thought, I didn't, even, I didn't even think for a second it was going to happen. I thought oh. it was just like, oh, they're just using that kind of background music for this particular yeah. scene. Because if it were the movie, this is when that scene would be taking place. But nope, they did the entire song. Did they really? Yeah, all they did was just put Sora, Donald, and Goofy in the background. Like, they were there the whole time while it was happening. The song got really popular. Wasn't it, like, on the actual radio and stuff? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, to be fair, to, I mean, it's a Disney song. It's a great song. I do really enjoy it. I <laughs> yeah. do. I, I do like Disney movies. I wouldn't call myself a fanatic like You have some the single. People are. You bought the single. I might have bought the single back. Oh, my God. Do people do that anymore? Is that a thing to buy a single? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, of course. Okay. Like off iTunes or to go and buy a disc. Well, that's how a lot of one song on it. Well, that's how a lot of <laughs> artists release their music now. I feel like, especially a lot of 
uh, pop and like rap artists, what they'll end up doing is they'll have their own album and then always between albums, they're like, oh, I did this single with Ariana Grande and Beyonce called this, you know, and then they yeah. release that and you can go and just download that single and then like all the singers involved in it will have it on their next album, but... You gotta share the love. You gotta share you the know? love. It's it's literally the equivalent to like teasing, like, oh, I have an album coming out. Here's a song that's on it. And they release singles. They release singles. Yeah. I mean, why put together a, a nine to 12 song album when you can just do one? And make millions off of it. <laughs> I guess they do that too, right? It's but, just a perk. But, Frozen, but the first Frozen movie was good. Uh, honestly, I'm not even looking forward necessarily to the second movie per se. I am looking forward to the music that's going to be in the movie. You think it's going to be great? Yeah. Well, Disney just never really, they they never disappoint when it comes to music. There's Who did the Let It Go? You know, I'm not sure who the writer or any of it, of the music. I don't think it was anybody notable in the sense of like, I don't think they grabbed like a famous pop artist right now or anything to come and write the music. It should have had like Pink do it. But that would have been interesting. I I've Pink always would have done well. I've always thought... It would be inter- – because what they usually end up doing – so like Lion King, for example, right? So Lion King was Ellen John and Tim Rice wrote all the music for that. Of course. Um, even when they did their most recent – and when I say recent, I mean within the last like 10, 12 years when they did that <laughs> Princess of the Frog movie. It was their last anime, oh, like, I remember actual that one. cartoon movie. I remember. That was a fun – when they were like Louisiana? Yeah. Yeah. And But I think Randy Newman wrote all the music for that one. So I don't know when the last time... Oh, I guess the last time was Moana. They had Lin-Manuel Miranda write all the music for that. And he's the one who's done that famous Broadway show, Hamilton, right now. Sure. Oh, Matthew, I'm not we, the most... Um, we have to get you culturally up to speed. I'm not super culturally <laughs> advanced, guys. But there's um. this... But for those out there who don't know, there's this giant play out there right now that's been popular for the past five years called Hamilton, and Lin-Manuel Miranda wrote all the music for it, and he wrote the music for Moana. But I don't think there was anybody... He's like a great guy. Yeah, he is a great guy, I guess. <laughs> I hope so. I hope you're a great guy, Lin-Manuel Miranda. It would suck if you're an asshole. But... <laughs> Shout out. Shout but... out. <laughs> but the... Uh... But no, I don't think Frozen music was written by like any like artist, famous artist or anything like that. Who did the Pocahontas music? I specifically co- Colors of the Wind. Colors of the Wind. I don't know. It might have been. I can't remember the names, but there are these two songwriters, uh, song and music writers, who have done a lot of music for movies and especially Disney movies in the past. They, I know they wrote the music for Little Mermaid, oh, as well as I think they did Beauty and the Beast also. Uh, yeah. um, if They've even done other movies not associated with Disney like... Uh, Little Shop of Horrors, they wrote all the music for. But they're they're very famous song and music writers for movies. They're very good about people coming to them and saying like, hey, we want this kind of music or we want this kind of feel for a movie. And then they can write hit songs for the entire movie in that genre. Huh. They're, there's like, we got hits. What yeah, genre do you want? They're super good. I think they did the, the music for Tangled <laughs> also, which was a great movie. Do you think like in the beginning, Disney wasn't huge, right? Like the company. Right. It was a small company in the beginning. So do you think like the stakes were ever so high at one point that like Walt, Walter himself, Walter Disney, <laughs> like, like threw the animator out of the chair and was like, no, I'm taking over. I'm doing this myself. The well, stakes are too high, guys. No, because I think he always did it himself. Oh, he was doing that anyway? Yeah, like Mickey Mouse and oh. everything. That was, that was him drawing it. Oh, really? Yeah, he's, he came up with oh, I thought Mickey he was Mouse. just the guy who started the company. Oh, no, no, no. no. Like, like, I'm going to find geniuses. No, it, he, he basically <laughs> invented, you know, what's the modern day cartoon now. Nobody had really seen a cartoon before. And then he did the Mickey Mouse tugboats little, uh, which was like the first Mickey Mouse cartoon, which See, is I, just... I thought it was like a Bill Gates, Steve Jobs kind of thing. No. Like one guy was doing all the work, but then Walt was like the guy who got the credit. No, they started doing only animation and then they went out and did uh, movies and that's when they started doing like Snow White oh, and oh, really? what was the other one? Sleeping Beauty. And then from there, they've branched off and done other things. And then when Walt died and somebody, I can't remember who was the first CEO to take over. But when the new CEO took over, they started creating was it all not these Walter other Jr.? movies. 
No, it's somebody no? else. No? Yeah, it's somebody else. Really? Yeah, it's a. Uh, it's actually funny because <laughs> Walter Disney was is known. Uh, I don't. I don't even know how true this is, but he's he goes down in history as being like an anti semite, right? He's this guy who started this company. I've heard, Disney. I've heard such things. Yeah. Yes. But and it's a Jewish man who runs the company now. I think I've heard that. Yeah. I think I've heard that. But I don't know if I don't know how true that is, or if it's just a rumor that's just gained so much headway that it's become like this weird fact now. But we're big Disney fans here at Harley Millennial. I um, love Disney, dude. We talk about them a lot. Now, <laughs> but I always have, feel like I have to make clear because, look, I am a big fan of Disney, but I am by no means a fanatic. I know people who will go to Disneyland like a hundred times a year, who live their oh, life like, like, like a once. Disney movie. Like, I mm-hmm. just, I like it. I enjoy it. I'll watch the movies over and over again, but I'm not just, I don't know, I'm there's there's a big difference. I always feel like I have to make that well, you're realistic. distinction. You understand? It's yeah, just a, it's just a movie. It's just a movie. Yeah, it's, it's not a feel good movie. Real life. Yeah, exactly. It's a feel yeah. good. They're feel good movies. Enjoy them uh, for that. You know what really kind of bothers me almost too much? What? It really shouldn't bother me at all. Is people who name their pets after Disney characters. The naming pets after Disney uh, characters doesn't bother me. It's, it was cute like the first ten times. It's. But see, but it makes sense to me to like, because I know people who name their pets after like anime characters, they like big anime fans and things like that. Heck, my first dog that I had, Shadow, I named him after the Shadow dog from Homeward Bound. Yeah, but people would also just think that he's probably just a dark colored dog. I mean, I mean yeah, Shadow. but look, the, the naming the pets after Disney characters don't bother me. What bothers me a little bit is when you name your child after a Disney character. So I remember when... <laughs> What's an example? Okay, so when Frozen came out, uh, there are th- uh, three characters in the Frozen movie are Elsa, Anna, and Kristoff, right? Okay, so Anna's already a normal name. So yeah, Anna's right. already a normal way. Elsa and Kristoff, not so much. Not so right? much. So when that movie came out, though, they noticed a surge. And okay, I will say this: even though Anna is not is still a normal name, they still included it because they said there was a surge of children being named either Kristoff, Anna, or Elsa after the Frozen movie came out. Really? So even though Anna is a normal name, the fact is people were still naming their kid Anna because of the movie Frozen. That's really particularly interesting to my brain because that movie is not geared towards people who are of age to have children. It's it's geared for a children's movie. So that means there was enough childbearing aged adults yes. who loved that movie. And that is exactly <laughs> why I feel like I have to make this distinction between a Disney fanatic and somebody who really enjoys <laughs> Disney because it's the Disney fanatics who are the people who are our age and live their life like it's a Disney movie, which look, if if you're happy doing that, by all as means, long as you're happy. I just want people to be happy. I really do. But it just annoys me. It's you just, know, uh, it's just one of those things I don't get. It's it's like when it's like when my little pony was out and there were bronies. Right. You, you know what I just thought of, bro? So the people who have the most common name with like famous movie characters are the horror film people. Yes. So like Jason. Freddie, <laughs> Michael, yeah, that's Chucky. A, I think Michael. Like, they're just normal names. I think Michael is still <laughs> is still pinned as the most like the most popular name amongst males. Michael. Yeah, I oh. think Michael has always been like up there, in, like the top three. Real quick, what's your favorite name? You have a boy tomorrow. What do you name him? A boy tomorrow. Yeah, I like Ross or Ryan. Ross or Ryan? Yeah, so I'd probably either, either name him after my dad or I've always liked the name Ryan. What about girl? Samantha Elizabeth Hansen. Oh, there you go. Yeah. You've thought of that one. So, that sounds like an actress. So what's funny about that name <laughs> is I was having a conversation with my parents once in, just in regards to like what, what you just asked me, like what you would name a kid if you had a kid. And I told them, I go, well, if I had a girl... I really like the name Samantha Elizabeth Hansen. I just really like the name Samantha. I feel like having the middle name with Elizabeth mixed with Hansen just kind of rolls off the tongue, right? Yeah, it does. And my parents started laughing. 
And of course, I'm like, what's so funny? And my mom goes, Adam, if you were a girl, we were going to name you Samantha Elizabeth Hansen. No way. And she goes, that's why when we got the do- our dog, we named him Sam because we didn't get a girl. No fucking so, way. Yeah. Dude. Dead serious. How funny. Yeah. How weird, right? How weird. How weird, dude. Um, I was almost named Timothy. Really? Yeah, my dad wanted to name me Timothy. Interesting. Yeah, I'm glad he didn't. I was gonna say I, I don't think I could. My mom was like, "See, you as no. a Tim." Yeah. I th- I don't think there was ever like a question about what to name me. I th- my mom always told me she goes like Adam was like the name for you. I think my mom once told me the story, but it was something along the lines of she, when she got here when she was young, or right before she got pregnant with me or something. Like something told her like in a dream or something, she was going to have a son named Matthew. And then she found out she was pregnant a little while after that. And she's like, well, his name's Matthew. Interesting. Yeah. I've heard stories like that, though, too. Where I've heard a lot of them, too. Like, like, oh, it just came to me. In, you know, literally, it just came to me in a dream. In a dream. You mm-hmm. know? But I've always liked um, Justin and Jamie. Really? Yeah. Jamie for, Jamie for a girl or Jamie for a boy? Jamie for a girl. Jamie for a girl. Yeah. Okay. Justin and Jamie. I've, I know it's super cliche. But Jamie Lynn, I don't know, it just sounds good. Jamie Lynn does sound good. Work. I feel like I've known some Jamie Lynns. You probably have. But it's funny, though, because you have one of those last names that a lot of girls have as a middle name. Yeah. So it's always... I've actually had girlfriends, more than one, in the past. Whose where middle name is like Lynn, it, right? It would have ended up being Lynn Lynn. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like blank Lynn Lynn. Oh, my gosh. What would you do in that situation? You met a girl named Lynn. You really like her. And then... Like, do you, I mean, Lin, Lin, uh, what do you do? Uh, do, you, do you just live your life being Lin Lin or? You, you think of a cute nickname. <laughs> start to think of nicknames real quick. <laughs> She's like, okay, well, I have to change my first name because we just can't have this, Matthew. Or if she's anyway. like, we're going to hyphen our last names. And, uh, and I didn't, I didn't mean to get onto the name <clears throat> tangent here today. Uh, this was supposed to be. To end up being who's your favorite uh, king of horror is what I originally wanted to ask. King of horror as in filmmaker or king of horror no, as character. in like, oh, like the monsters. Yeah, because we were talking about how, you know, most of the horror characters have really common names. Right. So I think the three, the kings are like Jason, Freddy Krueger, Michael Myers. I think they throw Chucky in there sometimes. Chucky in there. I would say you can add some modern ones in there too, like Jigsaw from the Saw movies. Mm, uh, I don't think he's considered a king. I have a hard time calling him a king. Well, I mean, I guess if if the way you define king is like old school, like are you talking about like the older like horror movies? Yeah, I think like they've the literally been, been dubbed the, the, the king okay. of horror. Um, out of those, Michael Myers. Really? Yeah. He's your favorite? Yeah, he's my favorite. Why? I've just... I was never really into growing up like the slasher kind of horror movie flicks, which is kind of what Jason falls under and what Freddy falls under, even what Chucky falls under. What really got me, what I really enjoyed about the original Halloween movie was it was just a guy standing there. I've always said that, bro. Michael Myers is the most realistic one. Yeah. He's just a serial killer. Yeah. Like, he exists in every city, in every world, or in every, uh, all over the world. Well, to be fair, he's he's become much more than just a serial killer because they can't kill him. They've tried blowing okay, him up. Okay, he's, and... like he's like an invulnerable right, serial right, killer. Right. But at the end of the day, he's just a big, strong guy. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, that's it. And I used to always, I remember when my, because my dad really likes the original Halloween movies also. Yeah. And we used to, when we were younger, or when I was younger, and he used to, and he showed me the first one, I just remembered it. Like, I was old enough to, like, not lose sleep over it, but still young enough to get scared from the movie. Oh, dude, they scare me to this day. Oh, man. I get creeped out. I was so creeped out when I first saw it. And the reason why I was so creeped out, because when I would watch, try to watch movies like the slasher movies, like Friday the 13th or Freddy, yeah, yeah. even at that same age, it was like I'd be covering my eyes at certain points, but not because I was scared, just because I wasn't into all the blood and guts and stuff at that point in my life. Yeah. Whereas with Mike Myers... I was literally like scared because this is a scary movie. This is man just walks toward you. You're running and this man's just walking. My only issue with with Michael Myers and Jason, okay, is that 
the story just isn't that well developed. There is a story because there's such a big fan base, right? So they did get, but like Freddy Krueger, who is my personal favorite, uh-huh. I love Freddy Krueger. He has, in my opinion, the most developed story around him. He has like strengths, weaknesses. He has a realm that he lives in. He's a dream demon, right? right? And like, you can actually, what I've always loved about Freddy is that you can beat him. Like there's literally a strategy that works every time. Mm -hmm. You just have to not be afraid of him and he loses his power. And like, to me, that's that's cool. You can put that in different settings. You can it kind of makes him a super villain. Yeah. yeah. Whereas Jason is just a zombie yeah. who like drowned, so he's afraid of water, uh-huh. right? Whoop de doo. And then Michael Myers is super creepy, but aside from like the fact that he was abused as a kid and had the weird thing with his sister, like other than that, there isn't a lot of background story that goes along with him. Well, I mean, there's even less than that because that's from the Rob Zombie remake. That's not even from the original. That's true, if, if isn't any, it? If anything, the original movie, I felt like, don't get me wrong. So my dad actually, I think I was 14 when the Rob Zombie Halloween remake came out. And because my dad and I like yeah. movies so much, my dad took me to go see it. Was it was good. And yeah, I... <laughs> Talk as, about gore, as some, though. Yeah, well, as somebody who's a fan of that franchise, I did really appreciate Rob Zombie giving us like backstory into Mike Myers. I thought that was really cool. It was cool. But what I loved about the original was the little... What makes things scary is little to no context. When, but right. you offer enough character development to make to let people make their own inferences about a character. That's why the Joker villain is such a popular character for people to play, for people to get into. Because you don't know into. anything about. Because you know, no, so you can literally the character can be whoever you want it to be. And whenever he talks about his childhood, it's a different story every time. Right. So when I used to be younger and watch these Mike Meyer Halloween films, I'd create these stories in my head where like he's like this is like what the devil looks like. When he comes into the human uh, world, or this is this, or this is this, because there was just little to no context. Because the very opening of the film is literally just from the kid's point of view of him putting this clown mask on, taking a knife from the kitchen, and stabbing his sister to death. And then yeah. he walks outside, and his parents come home and say, Michael, what are you doing? They take the mask off, and he's just holding a knife there with this blank stare on his face. Little it, to no context. In the beginning, his mask is a is a clown mask, right? Yeah, so he dresses as a clown in the very and beginning. Then, and then he switches it to the white mask. And what I loved about the sequels that came with it, and I think that's why Mike Myers is more my favorite than, like, Jason or Freddy, is because I think things like Friday the 13th and... Uh, the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, I think they had really good first movies, that base movie of like things getting started and everything. Like, because in the first, if you remember the first Friday the 13th movie, Jason wasn't even the killer, you know? I guess I don't remember that. It was his mother. His mother was getting revenge. Jason didn't become the killer until the sequel. Oh. Mm -hmm. And then... He was my least favorite of all of them. I didn't really... Yeah, I'm not really into Jason either, but... I don't like that all the sequels that you get from them are always kind of the same thing with like especially with Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm yeah. Street whereas I believe with the Halloween movies they're always different there's always these very different kind of intricate stories and it kind of becomes about how at least the original sequels it kind of becomes about how this evil keeps transferring over to like different family members so you had the first one that was about him going after his sister. The second right. one was still about him going after his sister. Right. And then the, the third one was a – that's something else. That's a separate story. And then the fourth one came back called The Return of Mike Myers where he was going after his niece. Oh, yeah. And then in the fifth that. one, he's still going after his niece, but it ends with like the evil transferring over to his niece. So when they get rid of Mike Myers, she puts on a clown costume and goes and kills like I think it's her brother or something like that in the end. Oh, and so it starts And again. it literally ends with her standing at the edge of the stairs holding this knife in a, in a clown costume and it starts again. <sighs> See so, that? Just let it just let it die. Oh, just let it die. They'll never let it die. There's Why? Like, I think there's like 20 movies in the Halloween franchise now. There's nothing wrong with, in my opinion, with going out a winner. No. Go out when you're at the top. You get Nelly did it. Remember Nelly, the no. rapper? Oh, Nelly, I do remember. With the band aid yeah. on his cheek. Uh huh. Dude, he went out when he was on top. You yeah. haven't heard from him in a long time, have you? That's true. There's nothing wrong with that. We still love him. He's he's in our hearts forever. 
Michael Myers, we love him and love him and love him, and then he's just going to... Well, then we're obligated to love him because it's been so many decades. Yeah, but I look so exactly what you're describing used to bother me big time. Also, I used to fucking hate that shit. Yeah. The reason why I don't have as much of a problem with it anymore is because I've realized what movies have become and movies have just become the new comic books because in comics. That's a, even especially with like the superhero movies, right? Because in comics, it's oh, it's that's a comic about this person, and then they'll come out with you know a whole string of comics that have to do with a linear storyline, right? And then a separate artist will be like, I really like this. I'm gonna make my, a separate comic, but just in my own style and my own art. Right. Like Batman, that's been done a lot. There's a, a linear story too. with Batman. There's literally linear... like three different renditions of yeah, Spider-Man. But Frank Miller will come and be like, I'm gonna do a really gritty Batman comic. And it's a separate story, It's a, but it's Batman. It, it's his version of Batman, his version of the villains. And that's all movies have become now. So you like the so it, that's what's going to happen with the DC universe right now, right? So they're rebooting the DC universe. They haven't announced the rebooting, but all the actors have dropped out. They're rebooting the damn universe. <laughs> okay. But what's going to happen is you're always going to have those older movies, and there are fans of the current DC movies that are out right now, just like how there's fans of the old Michael Keaton Batman movies and you know of the course. George Clooney Batman movie. It's the same thing. There, it's comic books. It's just done in movie form now and that's what you're and that's what you're seeing with like the horror movies because you're always going to have people like me who are fans of the halloween movie and you better believe that when the most recent halloween rendition came out uh last year i i went to go see it in theaters because i just love the franchise it's my is one of my favorite comic books that's a very interesting take on it. I haven't really looked at it from that perspective. Mm-hmm. And I know, and I used to not either. I used to be like, I'm so tired of the reboots. I'm so tired of the sequels. But now I get it. And the industry has become so saturated to where, well, if you don't want those, there's plenty of other shit out there for you to watch. I feel like Hollywood anymore over the last few years, they just have like one plan for the whole year. And yeah. then they just beat it to death. Oh, so yeah. like the last two Disney years, is really notorious for doing that. Yeah, they did the superheroes, right? Mm-hmm. So they did every comic book character, Still all the superheroes. Yeah. We're running out of those. So now, they're, what's the next thing? At least live action things, mm-hmm. which are awesome. They're badass, but you can just tell for the next eighteen months, all we're gonna get is every Disney movie from our childhood put into live action. Oh, yeah. They're just going to shove it down our throats. Yep, that's exactly what they're Which, my mouth is wide open. I mm-hmm. can't wait for it. But it's just, where's the creativity anymore? Where's the, like, spontaneous? The, the problem is, I don't think originality and s- spontaneity has disappeared. But the problem is, is it's the the ones with the louder loudest voices are these established companies now that just keep putting out shit you know or they keep putting out sequels or they keep putting out reboots or yeah i mean even if the movie is a good movie mm-hmm. it's so um obvious like it's you can see it a mile away where it's coming yeah. you know well i mean and you see it with like it's it's movies the ma- I should say the mainstream movies now yeah. aren't even so much about content anymore as they are about what kind of statement are you trying to make in the movie, you know? I mean, they're, true. They're, Who did you cast for this yeah. part, and where are they from you're in the seeing, world, seeing, and what cultures do you have involved on exactly. on set? And, and if you, which is beautiful and amazing, I'm not dissing that, but it's what, just. But it shouldn't be about that. It should just be about what's good and what's not. Pick you the know? people who are right and, for the roles. Yeah, and that's just it. Like, I remember a few years ago there was an issue where they were saying the Oscars were whitewashing, right? Because they said, like, that there were no uh, people of color that were nominated for any of these awards. Right. Now, I say people of color, but people were specifically at that point referring to black people, right? Okay, so very specific. Yeah, very, yeah specifically they were referring to that at the time. And, and like, and I... And at a certain level, I get that frustration, but you can't just say 
nominate a person of color because they're a person of color. No. They, if that particular year there were just more better uh, people who were white who gave better performances, then fine. It should there, be based on the performance yeah, solely. There could be a year where Asians just kill it in the film industry and all of their movies are nominated for an Oscar. That's fine. But you shouldn't sit there and say like, oh, because we don't have because enough of this cultural diversity in a movie, then we shouldn't watch we it. We have to shove it in there. Yeah. And it loses so much of its value when you do that, when you when you just shove things into it to make it look a certain way. Yeah. And it originally, it doesn't come from anywhere racist at all, nominating mm-hmm. that all the nominees that year happen to all be white. Yeah. Okay. Even if there's 0% racism in that, as soon as you start to call it racism, mm-hmm. you give it all of that power. Yes. Now it becomes 100% about racism. I watched a little thing with, I believe it was Morgan Freeman, uh-huh. who was talking about, in an interview, mm-hmm. racism. And the, the person giving the interview asked Morgan Freeman, said, what's the best way to end racism in America? Uh-huh. And Morgan said, even better than America, we could end racism all over the world. And the guy, the announcer says, how do you do that? And Morgan said, just stop talking about it. Yeah. If you take the power away from it, it's no longer a thing. Mm-hmm. And if you want to be recognized as the best, th- these are my words now, this, that, that was the end of what he said. But if you want to be recognized as the best, be the best. Yeah. And then it doesn't matter what color you are or what language you speak. Or exactly. H- Hussein Bolt, he's the fastest dude with, on two legs. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter that he's black, brown, purple, green. He's mm-hmm. faster than everyone else. So he yep. gets recognized for that. If you're an amazing director, Steven Spielberg, mm-hmm. he's won countless awards. He's incredible. Pretty sure he's white. Yeah. Right? It doesn't matter if he's black, brown, purple, Mars, or Earth. Mm-hmm. He's incredible he's at making movies. Exactly. So he's recognized for that. Exactly. It should it should have nothing to do with your race or your culture. No. It doesn't matter. Not at all. And because we make movies and media content so much about that anymore, there's so many good movies that go by the wayside. I mean, I showed you that movie Mother by Darren Aronofsky. Oh, fantastic movie, guys. Yeah, great fucking movie. If you movie. haven't seen Mother and you have an hour and a half, give it to that. Just watch it. And not only is it a great movie, but... I mean, don't get me wrong, this is my opinion, but I think Jennifer Lawrence should have been fucking nominated for some award with that. She was fantastic in that movie. I thought that was a fucking amazing performance. An amazing performance. I would have liked to see Darren Aronofsky be nominated for something for that movie. She she played confusion so well. Like, Mm -hmm. I've never seen someone portray confusion just as amazingly as she did it in that movie. Yeah, there's uh, we could we just could rant on about that it, movie. Oh, dude, it was great. But the but like my point being so like I looked at the Oscar nominees uh, for this year, and don't get me wrong, I there are a lot of movies on Is the Leo nomination. On there? No, yeah, he didn't do I, anything I don't think, this year. I was gonna say I don't think he really did anything last year. He got his one. He's done. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I saw what the nominees were, and don't get me wrong, I haven't seen all the movies that are nominated for Best Picture this year. There is one movie though that's nominated that Black I Panther. just I just totally disagree with. This is the again guys were young, dumb, and full of opinions. But Black Panther. I knew it. I knew you were gonna say there. that. Yeah. I knew you were gonna say Black Panther. I just I like I and I liked the movie Black Panther. I never saw it. But to me, it was a good movie. I heard a lot of people thought it was but, the Disney. And I'm and I'm somebody who doesn't really like the Marvel universe. Like there's very few movies within the Marvel universe that I actually do enjoy. And I did enjoy Black Panther, but there was there was nothing that screamed necessarily unique about it. It was just another superhero movie in the Marvel universe. But apparently, Adam, this has happened to us a few times now over uh-huh. the last few months. We must just have really bad taste in movies. I guess because the blindfold movie. What was the one with Sandra Bullock? Oh, where they're all blindfolded. What was it? Bird Box. Bo- guys, Bird Box. We understand that you guys loved it. We do, and we respect that. And that it, to each their own. Me and Adam. 
moderately enjoyed it. Now let me and let me that put, was it. And let me put context in here because it wasn't that the hype. It wasn't a situation where the hype was too high for us, and then we went in with high expectations and got low expectations because we didn't even know it was a thing. We were no. literally sitting on the couch looking for something to watch on Netflix. We saw Sandra Bullock was in this movie. That, we love Sandy B. Yeah, the thumbnail was her having the blindfold on. It was called Bird Box. We were like, let's we, do it. We read the description. We're like, okay, let's see how this movie is. And it wasn't until after we got done watching it that we found out that this movie was like a thing. It was huge. And huge. We, and we couldn't figure out why. Look, no, but ne- neither of us hated the movie. We both enjoyed the two hours. It but we would never do it again. No. And people were like, this is the greatest thing since fucking Titanic. Yeah. Oh, the performance. and Yeah, I literally I just, heard people uh, saying things like that. I'm like, it was just another subpar horror movie. Fun to watch, but forgettable a year down the line. You know what it was to me? It was a few months before that movie came out. There was another one called A Quiet Place. Oh, yeah, I never and it was, saw that one. Okay, so I went to go see that one. Uh-huh. And it was all about... I actually, I kind of thought it was a little bit clever. So no one could talk. <laughs> if anyone talked, the monsters would come out of the forest and they would fucking eat your face right. if you talked. And I thought, so it made for a super boring movie because there was like three lines in the whole movie. Uh, but I did think that the concept was very interesting. And I thought it was very adventurous and kind of ballsy mm-hmm. for the director to do it that way. You know, so I was like, all right. But then this Bird Box one, I'm like, they literally just remade the movie and took a different sense away. Yeah. They're like, let's make them blind this time. Plus, there were just things in the movie, too. By the way, this is major spoiler alert, but I really don't care about spoiling this particular movie. It's not the best, guys. There There were just things in the movie, too, that just didn't make sense to me. So at some point, Sandra Bullock has two children she has to take care of right Right. and she's taking care she's taking care of them with this other man that they got they got stuck together ended up you know being infatuated with each other who's a really good actor i thought by the way very good great job but and she ended up naming these two babies as they got older boy and girl because she had some hold up with raising oh she didn't want any emotional attachment yeah and i'm just like first of all Okay, fine. She has her fucking holdups with giving children names. Fine. But if I were the man that was with her, that because the man in that situation, there were even scenes where he's like, you got to stop calling them boy and girl. <laughs> well, I think he gave them names, like secretly. Didn't he secretly give them names? I don't think so. No. Oh, maybe that was just a joke I made. Yeah. Like, I would have gave them names. Uh, yeah, I think that might yeah, have been that a joke was you made. Okay. But, <laughs> but he would kept saying, like, like you, sh- you got to stop doing that. And I'm like... <laughs> Bitch, if I were the man in that situation, like I'd be like, "Oh, uh, we are not calling these two kids boy and girl." I like, don't know. They call the woman the boss for a reason, bro. Oh my god, she's gosh. the boss. But what I did think was super funny about that is that towards the end of the movie, more spoilers, they come across this like encampment, mm-hmm. and it's all blind people, right? Like blind people take over the world because oh, they don't get god. eaten. And oh, by the way, at- I don't think I don't think we mentioned this, but the context of the movie is there are these like demons that if you look at them, then you just kill yourself. So when you oh, go yeah. out into public, you have to wear this like blindfold so you can't see them. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. I'm <laughs> sure our we- viewers were very confused. I was gonna say I don't think we mentioned that at all. <laughs> so that's a thing. That's what's going on. So the blind people take over the world, and they get to this like huge encampment, and they're right in the front doors. And Sandra Bullock is like, "Stop! Everyone, stop!" So the dude stops and the two kids look up at her and she's like, she names them. Like right when they get to the front door, she's like, okay, you're Sally and you're Jim. And no, I've no. always called you that. I never called you no, boy no, girl. Don't you tell anyone. It wasn't even that. What was it? I remember this scene specifically because I just thought it was so stupid and, but funny. It was comical. So they walked into this encampment, right? And she like she ended up meeting her like old therapist or some shit like that. Remember? Right, right. And the therapist was like, what are your names? And they're like, boy, girl. And she's like, no, 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 no. no. Your names That's, are this I've, and this. She's like covering their ears and closing them out. Like, I never called them that. I, no, I love these kids. I was like, oh, bitch, now that like, there's people yeah, around. Yeah, 20 minutes ago when you could have died, yeah, they were boy were, and girl. Yeah, you're still calling a boy. Oh, mm-hmm, my gosh. Mm-hmm. I thought that was great. It was so dumb. But, yeah, that movie got so much hype. 
And, and it's Sandy just B, wasn't dude, good. she's just she's amazing. But I mean, going back to the original point though, like like that's just it. There are so many of these good independent, and there's a lot of A list actors that do these independent esque original movies too sure and they still just go by the wayside because we just want to vomit propaganda movies to to boast whatever narrative oh yeah ant-man will make 10 billion dollars but an actual good film like so did you ant-man was really good i like that so they're making a marvel the one of the newest marvel movies they're coming out with now is starring brie larson who's an up-and-coming a-list female actress Okay. And I guess female actresses were opposed to the male actresses. The male actor, yes, okay. of course. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say it's like oh, that's a little redundant, but we'll go with it. We're millennials. And we're millennials. But anyways, I just read this article yesterday. So she's starring in this Marvel movie called Captain Marvel, right? So there's this Captain Marvel. Yeah, that's the name of the superhero, Captain Marvel. And it's okay. this and it's this female badass character. She's basically like a spa- space police, right? She's like a space police officer. And she can do some Dragon Ball Z energy shit with her hands. Oh, that and, sounds badass. Yeah, yeah. She's I'm a, into she's it a cool Marvel character. And she just released this statement that says during so when these movies come out, they'll do these uh they'll do these press tours. Yeah. So they'll go of around yeah, and they'll to get talk like hype up the, for Yeah, exactly. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. And she stated that she was not going to do a press tour that was predominantly white males interviewing her. So unless they could make the people interviewing her or choose sources that are more diverse, that she was not going to do a press tour. So she refused to do it if it was white males. I feel like that's... That's kind of selfish. Don't you think that's a little bit selfish? I just... I mean, maybe selfish might be the wrong word. That's not why it bothers me. What bothers me is... I just think that entertainers should keep entertainment separate from politics. Amen. And that goes for, like, sports players, too. Like, you have a great gig. Keep your mouth shut. Throw the ball. Don't get into politics. Well, and not not even that. Like, it's not that because I feel like saying it like that, and I know you may not mean this, but I think saying I kinda, it I like kind of mean it. Well, we'll I mean, they got it. a got, really good gig, bro. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> denying about the good gig, but what I'm saying is, I'm not saying that these celebrities and these sports stars are stupid by any means or don't know what's happening. Oh in no, politics. not at all. Yeah, no, for sure. But when you're in the entertainment industry. I look at it as, and I'm saying this as I'm talking about politics stuff, but <laughs> but I do think it is your duty in the entertainment industry to give people an outlet to forget about that kind of stuff for a while. So when you yeah, you entertain, people. yeah. So when yeah. you put these annotations on what you do as like, oh, I, you know, this political activist thing, I understand that it's because you have a voice and a lot of, and you're an influencer. Okay, I just think. But where does your voice come from? Who gave you your voice? Did in, right. did highly intellectual, accredited people give you a voice? Or did people with paint on their bellies and hot dogs in their hands give you your voice? Right. Yeah. Okay, not to demean anyone, but like where does your voice come from? Yeah, but it's hard to make that argument also because then that could also imply that those people that you're describing are also idiots. And that's wrong to say. Well, there's no... Because we've all done stupid there's shit. There's no IQ test to get into the NFL, is there? No, you're right. There's not. You don't. Do you have to have a degree to get in the NFL? No, but you also don't need one to be president either. Ooh, touche. So, I mean, that's why it's such a gray area. Uh, Okay, I guess I can see where you're coming from. Yeah, just in my personal opinion, entertainers should say entertainers. And if you sing, if you have an amazing singing voice, Mm -hmm. do more of that. Yeah. If you have a great arm and you can throw faster than anyone, just, just. do stick yeah. to that. I guess I guess what bothers me too is and I think what bothers a lot of people who have the same kind of views about this that I do 
is not so much about like if you're an entertainer, stay an entertainer, but it's when these celebrities who make multi millions of dollars every day, and although they may have strong opinions about what's happening socially, the fact is you can't really relate to a, the blue collar person. You know, you can't relate to them, and because we're because here's the thing: if like let's look at the 2016 elections, right? And you have these okay. celebrities who are making multi millions of dollars, right? Every year. So it would affect them zero. If Hillary Clinton won or if Donald Trump won, they are affected zero. Whereas blue collar people like you or I might be a little more affected by who gets into office and the policies that they instate. I mean, of course I agree because I'm on the same side of the grass as you. Right. But I'm sure no matter where you stand, you have views on everything. Everything well, affects everything. Of course. Everything. And you're allowed like, to have views. I think <laughs> I think just when you're given when you're given a stance where you are a celebrity and you are an influencer, it shouldn't be like you and I can afford a little more to just be a little more blunt and open about the way that we feel. Whereas I feel like as an influencer, you chose that path. That is what you are doing currently. You owe it to yourself and to other people to go about things in a much more delicate manner than just calling names well, and screaming I also, propaganda. I agree. And I also think that people who have a voice get a lot more respect when they don't make money off of their voice. Right. Like – Someone like Gandhi, you know, for an extreme yes. example, like totally self-deprecating, meaning he would he would hurt himself for others, right. you know, all about love, didn't want anything in the world. They tried to make him a millionaire. He said no. Exactly. Like, OK, so he got a lot of respect for that. Right. right. He was a martyr. He like he, he died for his beliefs, mm -hmm. whereas, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Uh, someone who is making commercials, you know, and and maybe they're making commercials to for a greener society, mm -hmm. right? But by this miracle grow because it's all natural. Like you're making money off of that, right? So it's a great message, but it's it's hard to give you the same respect as someone who's doing it literally because they believe in it. Right. Well, and it, it goes back to intent and just, like I said, the way that you go about things. Because what really matters is the way that you're perceived, right? Especially when you're in those it kind really of positions. It really does matter. So like one example I can use is I remember when I believe it was the park, the Parkland shooting, school shooting that sparked this, where it made a lot of the, the kids did a walkout, right? Okay. So they all said like, we're going to walk out of school to protest school shootings because this shouldn't happen in our schools. And I get that. I understand that. And f look, 98% of the kids who walked out that day could have truly strongly believed in their cause, strongly believed in what they were doing, and strongly believed in the protest. I bet there were some who just wanted a day off of school. I bet there were some also. But I'm saying just let's let's say that 100% of them were doing it for that reason, okay. right? So just – just for the sake of this conversation. Okay. So they're all doing it because they want to protest this because they feel strongly about it. But the thing is, it doesn't matter if 100% of you believe that and that is why you're walking out on school because you know what it looks like to the bigwigs upstairs? It looks like these kids just found an excuse to ditch school and they did it. Why didn't they protest on a Saturday? That's, Why didn't they all get together on their day my off point. and then do it? And that's my point. And I think that's what we're losing sight of these days. It doesn't matter how strongly you believe in something. It matters more how you go about that. Yeah, how people view how you. How you go about expressing uh -huh. yourself to that. You would have – the bigwigs upstairs who can actually make a change for you would have taken you a lot more seriously if you went on a Saturday and did this protest with everybody in your school than if you did it on a Monday. Monday. But Adam, no one would show up on a Saturday. There'd um, be 10 kids who really believe in what they're doing. Yep. And the other 200 would not show up because they're on their skateboards and their cell phones. And that's more realistic. But, and it's, it's sad, but, but it's then, true. But I was then, a high schooler. I know what's up, guys. But then it comes to me where it's like, so don't these people who get pissed off that people aren't listening to these kids who are obviously protesting and stuff. It's like, well, yeah, but they did it on a Monday right after a weekend. You know, it's and just so uh, just like I was saying earlier, it's a yeah. perfect example They they have a wonderful message. Mm -hmm. Everyone can agree and get behind their message, but they lose a lot of respect because they got something out of it. Exactly. So. You know, so it's 
those those are the things that I think people just need to keep in mind when you when you want to go about or you want to express your ideas. And it's a beautiful thing that they can you know? express their ideas. Yeah. Thank it's, God we live in a country where you can do that. Yeah, it's That's like awesome. it's like when you're having a debate with somebody. You know, the second you make that person feel stupid that person's no longer going to care of what you have to say. So you have to be a little careful with how you word things to people, don't you? If you want to yes. even hope to get your point across. Otherwise, what is the point? True. So, True. I don't know. But we, we got really serious here. Let's 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 <laughs> lighten the load a little bit. <laughs> I mean, it's good. Sorry, guys. We're full it's of good. opinions. We're full of opinions, guys. <laughs> so we'll be more moments like that. Oh, so I just... Uh, Switching gears a little bit, so I just read an article today that says that YouTube is now the biggest, uh, the biggest social media, the most trusted, I believe, is what the article said, media platform amongst millennials. So they actually beat out Apple and Netflix. So YouTube is like the most trusted content creating company, like media company. I think so. Of them out there. Yeah. I kind of just skimmed through the article. But yeah, the, the words they used was the most trusted. More than Apple? More than Apple. So I think Apple wow. and Netflix are in second and third somewhere. Wow. But yeah. So very influential on in us. And that's ways. recent because they were, I also read that they were, YouTube was in 10th place in 2017. Oh, just like last year? Yeah. Oh, well, a year and a half yeah, ago? Yeah, a year and a half ago. Yeah. So interesting. They were at number ten. So just in a year and a half, they have jumped up to number one amongst specifically millennials. That's specifically the word that they use was millennials. You know, it's interesting you bring that up because I've been um, since we've gotten into this YouTube thing, guys. I'm a I'm a numbers person. Mm -hmm. I love numbers and graphs and charts and like statistics and shit. Mm -hmm. And I've been looking up a lot of statistics about YouTube and. Um, before I got into this, uh, the whole podcasting, YouTube, entertainment, I thought it was like at a point where it's pretty saturated. A lot right? of people like, do, I think. I, I think it's a pretty common misconception, actually. Mm -hmm. They think that this is like the end of the line for YouTube. It's, it's the NFL already. If you're not in, you're doomed. You're never going to get there. So I really believe, guys, that this new media thing is in its infancy. Mm -hmm. It's just starting out, man. And... It's amazing when you look at the numbers, they're not the most fantastic numbers, but what is fantastic is when you look at the past three years. Right. So like 2016 to 2017, the percentage increase is in, is insane. Yeah. And then like every year since 2017, 2018, like mm -hmm. you said, now they're the most, they went from 10th to first. Yep. Like, so these jumps that, that new media is making, specifically YouTube, it's incredible, and I think it has a long way to go still. Oh yeah, I, I think it's just starting. I we the this company is company as in YouTube is still in its just as you said infancy stage. L let me ask you this, not to cut you off. Yeah, but here's a here's an insight to how new this is. So you might already know the answer, but how many views do you think it takes before YouTube essentially cares about your video? before they actually take team members and tell them to go and verify the video? Like, at, w at what number of views does it become important? I mean, I would I mean, I mean, would assume something marketable, so I would assume something really high. So, like, I don't know, a 1,000 maybe? 1,000? I thought, like, maybe 10,000, yeah, you know? Because there's like so that. many videos with millions of views. Right. <laughs> Let me tell you guys, the answer to that question is 300. That low? 300. When you hit 301 views, more often than not, your video gets frozen. Now, people can still watch it, but your view count on your video will get frozen by YouTube. And they'll actually, what that freezing is, is they're taking it out of the algorithm uh -huh. and they're putting it into the hands of real life humans who will go and verify these views. Right. Interesting. So that sounds really boring and like it doesn't mean anything. But that's a very low number. Well, think of it this way. That means that 300 views is enough to put you into the top percentile where humans actually start to take over. So out of all the millions of videos on YouTube, right. YouTube only employs, let's say, let's go way overboard with it. They employ 100,000 people, which okay. they don't. It's probably like 10,000. But let's go way overboard, 100,000 people. So each of those people would have to look at like a thousand videos a day right. to get all of them looked at. It's impossible. They can only look at maybe 10 or 12 videos a day. Right. So that that's what makes the top like five percentile. 
and it only takes 300 videos to get there. 95% wow. of the videos on YouTube do not get 300 views. You know, our update video is at like 280 views. So if you're listening to this, I think all of you should go back you, and you watch that video. You can put us in a whole video. different level, guys. Put us a whole different level. <laughs> it's, but no, it's seriously, it's amazing to me. When I saw that number, I was like, oh my God, this... This is so young still. Yeah. That's what this is exactly why this was. Um, so before before we started this, and I mentioned this a little bit during our update video also, but before we started this company, one thing that I had told Matt in regards to why I wanted to jump on this in the first place is because I felt like you had this surge of people who were jumping on YouTube and creating content when YouTube was first coming out. So you had a bunch of people who had no fucking clue what they were doing, <laughs> making content. Yeah. And now that's fun, really. Yeah. And now that we're, how old's YouTube? 10, 12 years old? Just not that old. Yeah. I think you're right, about 10 to 15. Yeah. So now that we're 10 years into it, there are some people that have a better idea of how it works. And a lot of those ideas were created just from bullshitting and then it just happened to go someplace. But now we have reached a new point, and this article proves that we have reached this new point where this is the last time if you want to be a part of this new media movement, if you want to be a part of this new train that's going to be the new film industry one day, it's going to be the new theater industry, the new book industry. Then this, this is, is the time. This is the time to jump on this it. This is the optimum because it to is do it. yes, exactly. Because just as you said, there are a lot of people who I who believe that this industry is super saturated already. And it's no, your video options are saturated big time. They are, but, but the industry <sighs> itself is just starting. And this this article fucking proves it. In 2017, YouTube was tenth place. 10th place and now YouTube has surpassed Apple and, and Netflix. Netflix that's insane that's insane and it's just gonna go up from there and YouTube is not even its own mother company like it's just a subsidiary of Google yeah that's crazy and, that, and you're talking about uh, Apple's one thing because Apple doesn't really create content right but Netflix Netflix creates these high budget TV shows and oh. original movies. There are Disney. They They're even the have forefront a yeah. Of they new even media. they have deals with Warner Brothers and Disney to have their yeah. movies on there. So you're talking about high budget content that Netflix is putting out, and millennials would rather watch YouTube. Well, don't you think they relate to it more? Well, it's it's to YouTube more. I think it's more genuine. Even if the people on it aren't necessarily genuine, but you you're. You're, you're getting the illusion, right? People want the illusion. Absolutely. And YouTube offers that because anybody can go on there and make whatever the fuck they want. And you can watch whatever you want. It's just as easy as searching. Netflix, you have to search for a specific movie. You have to look through certain genres. Whereas YouTube, I mean, hell, we have a roommate that gets into a lot of hobbies all the time. And the best way he <laughs> learns about those hobbies, though, is going on to YouTube. He does. And if he wants to learn about gardening, well, guess what? There are thousands of content creators telling you how to do this it helped us build this channel man if you get into hamsters you can find thousands of channels of people who just love hamsters and will teach you about hamsters that's why people want youtube because anything that you could hope to want you can find on, on a quick note of the roommate as well um and his current projects i i think that he's lost to the backyard i think so justin is on this new kick of digging holes i think we touched on this uh, yesterday, yesterday or the day before yeah. Um, he's been out there for hours today, guys. It's oh, a day yeah, off. Just... And he's just digging. Just digging for treasure. We don't know. <laughs> I, I hope he finds something. Um, but he is looking hard, guys. Uh, he really is, though. Justin really gets into his hobbies, though. I really wish I could get to hobbies. He's crazy. Sometimes as much he doesn't as he take does. breaks. Yeah. He he just he just digs. He went he woke up this morning and when Matt and I went outside for our coffee and cigarette, just went outside and started digging. Speaking <laughs> of the coffee, uh, I feel like we should touch on it for a moment because okay. it's been an ongoing thing it for the past been. week. Um I wouldn't say that I'm happy, but I'm starting to cope. Okay. I'm starting I've I think I'm through the morning stages uh -huh. of of the coffee shop, I think that I've mourned my loss. And now I'm moving into a little bit of the anger stages. Okay. You know, like you have the seven <laughs> stages of grief. Right. So I think I've mourned and I'm getting over the anger and it's becoming numbness now at this point. Uh -huh. It's just, 
you know, it, what, what's the point of, of feeling? Because I'm stuck with one option for coffee. It's all I have. I just, well, let me ask you this, Matthew. Okay. <laughs> so if we're moving, we've had, we've, as Matthew just mentioned, this has kind of been an ongoing thing. Oh. One of one subject of this ongoing thing is this Keurig battle where Matthew swears by this Keurig and yet the Keurig is amazing. But yet we go every morning to the gas station to get coffee and it's causing you grief. <laughs> well, because coffee is a bonding experience. It's how we build our relationship closer day after day. Okay. So if I have my Keurig and you go to the gas station, I'm never going to talk to you except on podcasts. <laughs> Wait, I can't have that. Oh, we're going to. We're... So I sacrifice for you. I hope you know that. Oh, my God. I'm, thank you so much. I sit in the car while you drive and I stand at the counter while you pay. <laughs> and then I drink my coffee while you come up with all the ideas for the podcast. <laughs> and I am sacrificing for you. Okay. <laughs> You I couldn't do this without me. I appreciate your sacrifice, <laughs> Matthew. Oh, my gosh. I promise we're going to have a better system soon. We really are. Better? It's, How could you be better than this? I don't know. We'll find a way to be this better. Is, this is the best we could get. But, oh, my gosh. Look, the, we're probably just going to have to open up a coffee shop. Okay, so I've actually... Oh, Adam just lit up, guys. So I've thought about... Because opening a coffee shop is, is always something I, I've always wanted to do. Sure, you and every other hipster in the and, world. Uh, but, uh, see, that's... Kinda, I mean, yes, yes. <laughs> Come on, Adam, but, they've seen you. <laughs> but the thing is, it's like I always like it, though, because I'm not really into coffee, per se, right? I don't just have this aching for coffee, but I just love the coffee house atmosphere. I mean, heck, the You're local literally coffee... a hipster. The local coffee shop we used to go to, I mean, that was like a thing every morning, right? You it was went great. to the local coffee... Yeah, it was great. We had our chairs would, we sat in. Yeah. And I would love to be able to have that experience, or to be able to offer that experience for people, but that also requires... Like, if I hope to ever do that one day, I have to I have to learn a lot about coffee. You can't go into something like that half-assing it, you know. You I'm, know I'm quite the coffee aficionado myself. Yeah, I well, know, I mean, I know a thing or two. About I don't want to be an aficionado. I want to be a fucking coffee god. I want to know. <laughs> Whoa, Adam! Like, Anyone who's ever called themselves god of something got a really <laughs> hard time for it. But I just, but I just like, I just mean though, like, I want to know, like, literally all the ins and outs of coffee, and even even just to how it's him, grown, even him. it's it's. I just, I just have a lot of passion, okay? But so, but I, what I'm saying is, I think that might be come my next thing of just getting really into coffee and just learning as much as I can about coffee to better prepare myself for when the hardly millennial coffee shop opens somewhere down the line 10, 20 years from now. It's hardly coffee. Hardly coffee. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> Too funny. Well, man, we got, we got into some, some serious conversation today. Yeah, thanks for bearing with us on that one, guys. Yeah. That hasn't happened to us in a while, <laughs> even um, even off camera. I do want to say mic. too, you guys might think that this is scripted, and honestly, if you think it's scripted, we appreciate you. It's not. <laughs> no, it's not. We literally write about six to ten topics down on a pad of paper, and we just go at it, guys. Yeah. And I just want everyone to know, politics was not written on the paper today. No, it wasn't meant to happen. But you were a part of it, and we appreciate you being there with us and you want to know what's funny i think the subject of like politics and social politics uh was a tangent from the king of horror topic of who was your favorite horror character you, you never know <laughs> you never know where these topics are going to take us guys yeah it's, it can go anywhere it's pretty well we'll we'll try to keep it a little more lighthearted for you guys tomorrow though <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening today. We always appreciate our listeners. Uh, just reminding you, you'll be able to find this episode on SoundCloud. Uh, just want to remind you of the GoFundMe we have also. Uh, also, make sure you follow us on Instagram. That's the big one I'm going to push today. We're really trying to build our followership up there. Um, we'll push Twitter later, but Matthew and I are still trying to figure out Twitter. So <laughs> Twitter illiterate, uh, you know, right now, there. right now I'm just basically <laughs> posting memes on Twitter. So if you want to go... 
check, check our memes out. out. Yeah, they all check, have to do with millennials. Yeah, all have to do with millennials. But otherwise, <laughs> you can follow us on Instagram. Um, if you search hardly millennial, you'll be able to find us. But if you want to search our exact name, it's hardly underscore millennial. And go ahead and follow us. We try to post something every day. Uh, we're getting a little better every day about making our posts a little more interesting and a little more not just advertise And but. remember, guys, what we talked about earlier, it only takes 300 views to put us into a whole different yes. category. So go back and watch the update watch them. video. Shh. The best thing you can do is share it with your friends, guys. Yeah. That's the most help. And you know what? If you enjoyed this podcast too, uh, what is this, episode five for us? I think we're I up think, to five. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We, we have four other episodes for you guys to listen to. So if you really enjoyed this, please go back and listen to the other ones. That's why they're up there for you guys. Um, but well, I think that's enough begging. I think that's today. enough begging for today. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for listening. We love Thanks, it and guys. appreciate every single one of you. Love you. Mwah. See Good you night. tomorrow.